earliest memories of cooking, I would say watching my mom cook. She really loves food and is like an avid reader and cook and was always experimenting and sitting on a stool in the kitchen and watching her cook. I am Yowande Kamalafe and I am a columnist here at the New York Times. I'm really interested in the concept of oral recipes and how that recipe energy passes from one person to another. So today I'm actually taking a recipe that I got from a friend. I have not cooked this recipe before. I don't even really know what the recipe is, so my friend Clancy Miller is going to talk me through the steps of the recipe and what she does. I'm gonna try to recreate it here in the kitchen using my intuition, paying attention to my senses, and kind of adapt it and make it my own. This is Clancy Miller, and today I'm going to ask you to recreate my chicken curry cayenne soup. My relationship with chicken soup, outside of my childhood and my mom making it, I started making my own when I moved to Paris for culinary school, and within the first few weeks I got a cold, and there were no delis or bodegas to run to for prepared soup. I love that she's like such a New Yorker. There were no delis or bodegas in Paris. What? So I start out by searing the chicken breast. I season it with some salt, curry powder, and like a little bit of the cayenne. I don't cook it completely through, but just so it's got some color. Then in my pot, I have the broth. I add the rosemary, the thyme, garlic, chopped carrot, peeled, chopped sweet potatoes, and onions. Oh, and sometimes I have I add this special little bouillon cube. It's a porcini, like a quarter of it, so it's not too salty. Then I add the cooked chicken, and then I just let it cook. When it's ready, I add in chopped kale. If you had like leftover cooked rice, or if you had like some cannellini beans, I think that would be a nice little addition. And that's it. I hope you have fun making this dish, and I can't wait to see and taste what you make. Amazing, okay, great. It looks like a very flexible recipe. And like, I'll say this, like I wrote my book by like having conversations with my mom over the phone, by my, my food memories from growing up in Lagos. This process feels very familiar to me where I feel like recipe knowledge exists as energy <laughs> and I feel like Clancy has this energy surrounding this recipe and she's like transferring it to me. So that's kind of the way I think about recipes. I know more about Clancy by cooking through this recipe. And I think that's really what I'm trying to tap into. I'm gonna head out to the market and pick up some extra ingredients. I think coconut milk, Thai chilies. I think a few things that would create my version of this dish. So I'm gonna start with seasoning the chicken and adding salt and some curry powder and then heating up the pan. Turn it around, season both sides. So olive oil. I don't want it too high because I put the spices on the chicken already so I don't want to burn the spices. So I'm just doing like a medium low. I'm using bone in chicken breast here because I feel like the bones add its own flavor. I'm intensifying the flavor of the chicken by like browning it on all sides. And also I'm toasting the spices because I can really smell the spices right now. I'm gonna do the carrots and the onions together. So however thick I'm going, it's gonna be the same size on the carrots and the onions. And I'm going like one inch because I want it to be a nice bite on your spoon. Are you nervous to be cooking someone else's recipe for them for the first time? With this, I feel pretty Confident, it, it's gonna turn out fine, you know. The garlic I'm gonna smash. When you can smell the aromatics that you're you're chopping or, or cooking with, that's a good sign. It means that, that you've released all the like essence or like the oils. Earliest memories of cooking. I would say watching my mom cook and helping her out. Like, oh, can you peel this onion or can you peel the beans or can you pick these herbs, and I was always super eager to help her. Do you do the same with your girls? 
I do. I mean, they're really young right now. Them in the kitchen is is hilarious. But Asha's really, she's like really into what I do in the kitchen. The other day she was like, Mama, you're a really good cooker. And I was like, oh. So my chicken is nice and brown. My spices have been toasted. Okay, so the next step is just sauteing the vegetables. I'm essentially doing the same thing with the vegetables, intensifying the flavors by browning them in the chicken flavored oil. I'm adding some Thai chili because I love heat. And what I'm doing to the chili, so I'm gonna poke little holes in it just to release the oils. Now I'm just gonna transfer everything to my hot oil. At this point, you can turn up the heat to get your vegetables sauteed. I'm bathing the vegetables in that chicken and curry flavored oil. I like to season every step of the way. My onions and my carrots are like the hardest of the vegetables that are going in, and they're the ones that absorb the most flavor. So I'm adding that in first. Garlic is like so much smaller than the rest of the vegetables, and it's gonna cook at a quicker rate than the larger vegetables. And my chili is also going in. So my herbs are going in, and then I'm gonna add some more curry powder. So I'm gonna cut the chicken up now, cut up the sweet potato. Another thing I'm gonna do is throw the bone in there. I want the most flavor I can get. And for my chicken, I'm going for bite-sized pieces that will fit on my spoon. Okay, so chicken's in. I'm gonna add the chicken broth. Oh wait, I have to add the, the bouillon. I'm just gonna add about a, maybe a tablespoon. That's like about a tablespoon. And this is really just to deepen all the flavors. We're going for flavor here. That's gonna add some nice depth to it. Chicken bone broth goes in. So I'm gonna cover this, let it simmer. I like the starchiness of a Japanese sweet potato. It actually reminds me the most of the sweet potatoes that we have in Lagos, which are closer to taro root. This is definitely something I'll make again. It feels soothing and comforting. And I love that it came from a friend, you know? Oh, that's like so round. I think the, the mushroom base or the vegetable base also gives it like a nice depth. So it feels like it's been cooking for so long. That's good, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna add in my sweet potatoes. Oh my God, I totally forgot the, that's like the most important thing. It's in the, so because I forgot to add the cayenne, I'm gonna put that in right now. You know what I'm gonna do also? Like there's so, still so much meat on that chicken bone that I feel like it's important to just take it all off. So I'm gonna let that cool and then pull off the meat with a fork. At this point with the sweet potatoes in, the soup's gonna get thicker from the starch of the sweet potatoes. Once the sweet potatoes cook, I'm gonna check the consistency and adjust it with coconut milk. But also because I just really like coconut milk, especially in soups get every single little inch of the yeah. skin off the bone. <laughs> this is definitely the Nigerian in me. I expect it to be kind of spicy because I added the cayenne. Mm, it's spicy and sweet. That's interesting. So I want to point out two things. You can, visually, I can see that the broth has thickened ever so slightly, but also the sound of the simmer is, it sounds denser, the liquid sounds denser than like runny soup. And if you want it thicker, just keep cooking it and then add your coconut milk. So I'm gonna pour in coconut milk. I'm gonna use the whole can just cause it's me and I love coconut milk, but you don't have to. Oh, that tastes great. With the addition of coconut milk in it, especially because it's full fat, I think that it could really benefit from like a squeeze of lemon, lime, something acidic, like a pop of acid to just make it brighter. 
So I'm just gonna let this simmer on low, turn it off after about five minutes when it gets to the thickness that I want. And then when Clancy arrives, I'll warm it up, add the spinach and serve it. I prefer it to kale, but I think you could go with whatever leafy green you have. Hello! Yay! Ooh. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> this is so good. So, Thank you for having me. This was such an incredible recipe. I loved the story behind it because I can think of you sitting in your apartment in Paris. Like when I think of Paris, I think of Clancy. For some reason, I have that like association in my head. And then I was like, she's such a New Yorker. It's like she's looking for a bodega or a deli in Paris. Like that's such a New York thing to say. Telling the story of like how you weren't feeling well and you just wanted something comforting and cozy. That like translated into how I made the recipe. And so taste it and let me know what you think. Okay, I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank it's you. so beautiful. I'm so excited. I am gonna squeeze a little. Do it. Because yes. why not? Mmm. There's an no. earthiness. Mm. I changed a few things. Okay. Because I love spice, I added a Thai chili. And then I added coconut milk because I Ooh, add, yes, yes, as everything that I cook lends itself to coconut milk. I yeah. love that. <laughs> it's so good. And the coconut milk is perfect. So part of this process for me is trying to get people to understand that cooking is a trial and error process. So I'm, I'm curious to know how much, how you view trial and error in the cooking process. I kind of think it's like you have to tell yourself and remind yourself it's okay to make mistakes. Like first of all, get rid of perfectionism. As a home cook, I think that's the first thing. I like your decisions here. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I like Thank your decisions. You. I was, love the This line. was great. The fun thing about cooking in particular versus like pastry making or baking is that you can tweak as you go along, like you taste. I think that's a big part, like mm, tasting, yeah, as, tasting you go. as you go. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those two things. Yeah. Like A, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let yourself off the hook. Mm -hmm. B, taste as you go. Yeah, like or that pay action. attention to your senses. So thank you again so much, Clancy. It was so lovely to do this first episode with you. Thank you for sharing your recipe and your memories with me. Also just coming along with me on this journey. Like this is, this is fun, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me, it was my pleasure. This was so fun.